Are you Cinderella and do you need to go from this to this quickly and on stage? Well, have no fear my friends, I am here to help. Hello, I'm Rebecca of Pocketful of Posies and I will be making a transformation gown for a production of Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella and I will bring you all along on the journey. So without further ado, let's get to it. Here we go. All right, here's the plan. Many layers. First, a petticoat. It has some netting at the bottom to help keep the hem of the skirts away from her feet. I stole it out of a modern donated formal gown and added an elastic waistband. Next, an underskirt. I made it like an 18th century petticoat with ties for adjustability. Check out my video about these magical skirts here or in the description below. On top of that is another 18th century style skirt that will be bustled up with twill tape ties attached to the bodice with snaps. Now the ball gown. Skirt first, organza on top of white cotton with washers sewn into the cotton hem to make sure it falls down. Just rectangles with a waistband. It can be as full as you like. Now the ball gown bodice slash overdress. The underskirt with the twill tape ties is pulled up over the ball skirt to conceal it. The peasant breakaway bodice goes over that to hold the skirts in place. The breakaway bodice will not be sewn together at the side seams, the shoulder seams, or under the arms of the sleeves. It will use the eye side from hook and eye tape on both sides of all of those seams and sew fishing line through them to attach the seams and then the fishing line will be pulled out and the bodice will break apart, the ball gown will fall down and be glorious. I hope. Let's do this. I'm using and modifying a free mood pattern for the breakaway bodice, link below. I did a mock-up fitting with our Cinderella and it looked good. I got started sewing. First, I did the front darts, and then I sewed the bodice backs and sides together. I repeated the process with the lining fabric. I added boning to the side back seams. the eye tape to the side seams of the lining layer, then folded the outer layer over to cover the raw edges. I realized then that I had forgotten to add boning to the side seams, so I sewed on a piece of twill tape to act as a boning channel. For sleeves, I used a cotton dust ruffle. I just made up the sleeve pattern. <laughs> but Mood has lots of free sleeve patterns if you're looking. Okay, so I've been working on the Cinderella bodice and I actually originally was making one in my size, which I mean, I pretty much put all together and laced up the sides and realized, okay, this is going to work. And so started the one for the show. And so I'm working on that now and I've got, got the lining, I've got the boning in on one side. So I'm just going to finish that up. I'm going to, I'm going to do all of the pieces. So it ended up being, it's going to be three pieces. There's a front piece that's cut on a fold. It has darts and then there's two back pieces and the front and the back pieces at the sides are put together with fishing line. It's like a false seam and then we pull that fishing line and it will come apart. So let's go. I added some width to the back of the bodice so I can use a wide Velcro. I want to be able to get it on and off quickly, but also have a little adjustability when the ball gown skirt layers are under it. The front has eye tape from the low shoulder seam around the front arm side and down the front side seam. The eyes on the eye tape at the side seams alternate placement to get a closer fit when I weave the fishing line through. 
<laughs> the bottom seams of the sleeves are finished and eye tape is added to both sides. I added elastic to the sleeve ruffles to give a snug fit and conceal the ball gown sleeves better. The front arm size of the sleeves are attached to the bodice front arm size with eye tape. When the bodice splits, the sleeves fall towards the back with the back of the bodice. The sleeves are only actually sewn to the back of the bodice. Fishing line time! I used two pieces of fishing line on each side. One length goes from the bottom of the side seams up around the front arm side and through the low shoulder seam. The other piece of fishing line goes up from the bottom of the side seam through the sleeve seam under the arm. And it works. Petticoat. skirt over skirt which is inside out because once the ball gown goes on it gets pulled up like this so then the inside becomes the outside washers covered in twill tape will be used to pull the fishing line out when she needs to transform I attached the washers to the bodice with a narrow piece of elastic so she could pull but the washer wouldn't go flying off when she did. Metal snaps on the inside of the bodice are used to bustle the skirt and keep the bodice attached to the skirt during the transformation. In hindsight, I should have used the set-in plastic snaps because at least one piece of the bodice unattached and fell on the stage each transformation. It's not super noticeable from the audience though, so it worked just fine, but those set in plastic snaps that have a harder grip or more heavy duty metal snaps would probably have worked better. To the ball gown. So I may or may not have decided to completely redo my design for Cinderella's ball gown two weeks before the show. Now the reason I did this is because originally I was planning on using a wedding dress and I realized as we were kind of getting things together and working on the transformation and all of that, I realized that it was going to be way too heavy to have underneath her other costume because it would have to be pulled up and put inside the bodice, the skirt would, and there was just too much material and it was just going to be too heavy. So I'm redoing it. I'm also using silk taffeta for the bodice and the kind of overskirt which I had uh, planned to do originally because I had some left from my Victoria one of my Victorian projects and it wasn't quite enough for me to do a whole costume out of but it's enough to do a small bodice and a kind of polonaise small polonaise overskirt and then for the skirt I'm going to make a just a skirt a big skirt <laughs> with the underlayer is going to be just white cotton and then I'm going to overlay it with this blue organza you can't see <laughs> this blue organza <laughs> so it's it's a light blue so I think it's gonna be pretty and honestly honestly I've had this fabric sitting in my stash for 
many years at this point because I don't remember what I was going to use it for originally, but then I didn't. Oh, I remember. I originally thought I would make my sheer, my 1860s sheer dress out of it, but this is poly and I just, I went with cotton voile instead, which I think was a better choice. Anyway, so I've had this blue sitting around and I thought, well, I mean, honestly, that will make a pretty princess ball gown skirt. So that's what I'm going to do. And it will be much lighter and it will much, be much easier to get up and conceal within the other costume. So off we go. I used a simplicity pattern and modified it a bit. At least I added a polonaise skirt to the bodice pattern. Some pretty sparkly lace trim was added to the skirt and bodice. I used a lace enclosure instead of a zipper for a better fit, although the quick change would have been easier with a zipper, but I wanted the costume to be a little more versatile if we want to use it for a future production for a different actress who's not quite the same size. Here is the peasant costume without the ball gown underneath. You can also see I used an 18th century pocket to put her mic pack in. So useful. If you'd like to see how I make 18th century pockets, check out the link in the description for a video about that. And then here, the ball gown is underneath the peasant costume. And ball gown! Performance rights to Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella are very, very strict, so I don't have any video from the show. Hello, I'm here with Michaela, Hi. our Cinderella. Brought her back in to redo the transformation so you all can see her. So this is what she wears underneath her costume. She's got her stays and she's got her blue petticoat and her shoes. I think you also had stockings too, but. So, building up the layers, we have her little bum pad. Over skirts, <laughs> I gotta get my arms out of it. <laughs> turn, turn you around. So I laced it like a corset so that can just pull here instead of having to relace every time. So then we just get it closed. And these were some harrowing moments backstage, trying to get this done very quickly. Right, Michaela? <laughs> but it was more when the other costume refused to work properly. <laughs> So same thing here, I'm just going to tie this in the back. And then I just kind of tuck the tails so they don't get in the way. Alright, you want to do a little, little spin of the costume. There we go. So now the magic. <laughs> it was at this point that we realized that we had forgotten the order of skirts. It'd been a while. So off the ball gown skirt came and the peasant overskirt was put on. I also didn't notice during this that the bottom of her ball gown bodice was tucked into the peasant skirt. It's not supposed to be that way. You get very close in the theater. <laughs> and then the front. Okay. All right, so let's just hold that up for a sec. There we go. So now we put on the peasant bodice. Ah! I think this was the only Velcro I used in the show. Okay. So it is held 
held together with fishing line. to help hide the ball gown as much as we can. Okay. Now, to conceal all of this, we've got little snaps, and we take, we pull this up, and then we've got little ties here. So we kind of Put the, the peasant skirt up into the um, other skirt. I basically just go all the way around, getting all of the ball gown up into the bodice. Now, for the show, uh, I had more than one pair of hands, <laughs> so it was a little bit easier to get it all tucked up in um, sometimes. But I guess one night it came out. So. I do have a little dark and shaky cell phone video from a rehearsal where we were trying the transformation gown for the first time. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I will see you again on our next sewing adventure. Bye!